What is going on guys, Brown here and welcome back to the F1 career mode Here today for the penultimate round at the Brazilian Grand Prix We've had some absolutely amazing Brazilian Grand Prix in the past 2008, 2012, absolute banger races Can this one be the same? Into qualifying, you can see it's a little bit cloudy But it isn't meant to rain so we should be alright Our first run but it's P P9, P3 for now, but you'll see in a minute that we've dropped down to P16, which is enough to get through into Q2. And you can see here we found another couple of attempts as we go up to the line. Really important to get that exit out of, um, out of that real final corner, let's be honest, the kink isn't really a corner. Um, P15, we're into Q2. And there you can see some of them. Some of them out. Kevin Magnussen is going to start last. I mean, even Nicholas Latifi, that's not a surprise at all. And on our first run into Q2, we make a massive mistake. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm keeping my foot in there. Um, even though we're on the grass, I don't really know what I'm doing, so that's one run down. And now onto the final. We went, we went again um, before going at the end of the session. You can see we're seconds up, which we're going to be because we were facing backwards for about 10 minutes, and that puts us P16, so not enough yet. But we need to find a much more time out of the final corner. We've found quite a bit of time as we go through the kink and up to the line have we done enough to get into Q3 the answer is no we have not and we will start the Brazilian Grand Prix from 16th on the grid Welcome along then to the place where heroes and history are made. It's where the 2008 title was decided in the final corner. And it's the place, a year later, that Jensen Button stormed through from 14th on the grid to claim his one and only Drivers' Championship. It's into Lagos, and it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. It's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at Interlagos, where the Sao Paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit. Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical sector two, where getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be the key to any overtaking prospects today. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Now, I want to talk to you about Valtteri Bottas. It's been a wonderful year, and they come into this weekend's Grand Prix as a fully deserving champion. It really is well deserved. I wouldn't say it's been a faultless title challenge, but certainly one that has been consistent and well managed. Here's hoping they let off a bit of steam today and give us an exciting race. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Vettel, Bottas, Max Verstappen and Perez, Sainz, Ricardo, Brown and Lance Stroll, Kvyat, Ocon, Kimi Raikkonen and Grosjean, Albon, Giovinazzi, George Russell and Kevin Magnussen, Latifi, Gasly, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, Norris and Callum Island. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. So here we go then, the strategy for the race is a pretty easy one stop um, It's always really been that, it was like that on F1 2019 as well um, It's a bit of a weird one, I know you can do it on the hards but you can go a little bit further on the mediums On the softs to go to the mediums but It's lights out and away we go in Brazil <laughs> And it's a good start by both Ferraris, they've been jumped there and we are going to send it down the inside of everyone we started in P9. Max Verstappen side by side with Sergio Perez. The two Mercedes side by side as the two Ferraris get away. We're on the back now. Build a little gap between Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez behind us. Sergio Perez tries to go for it. And we're in P5. 
there's Ferrari, Ferrari, Mercedes, Mercedes, as we go wide there. And if we can keep up with these, I'll be very, very happy as Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen go side by side through the king. Perez, instead of the inside, going to try and force Max wide, but Max will have the inside line for the next corner. We go to the most shocking camera angle you've ever seen through the corner Max Verstappen tries to hang it around the outside but Sergio Perez takes P6 at the Brazilian Grand Prix what a start to the race this is Team Mercedes on the back foot on the towards the end of the opening lap and now they've got a regroup push Ferrari again this is before the Ferrari update so they're still Still a bit to gain. And now, this is a replay of the start. The lights go out. We are straight over to the, the, the left hand side of the track. So we can try and go up the inside. And there we go. Slight contact with, with Sergio Perez. But we got the job done, and that's all. That's all we need, up into P5. And then this is where we went wide, and absolutely shocking there. Shockingly going wide. Stupid incident. Stupid mistake. Opening lap brakes are cold though. So, coming out now on the end of lap 2, out of the final corner. And here comes Sergio Perez then, going to try and go to the outside. We managed to keep the slipstream trying to go to the outside, round the outside. Perez tries to go, we block him off, he then tries to do the switchback. We block him off again. Now Max Verstappen is trying to get up the back of Sergio Perez, going to get the job done. We have to go defensive to the inside, Sergio Perez. So up the inside, he made contact there. We've gone off the track. We've gone right off the track, and there's contact with Sergio Perez. And Perez is hit strong. And the two racing points have come together here in the Brazilian Grand Prix. Lance Stroll has come worst off. And now we've lost out to Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz in his McLaren as well. And this is a replay of what happened and we just came, it's, it's my fault, it's my fault, I'll, I'll hold my hands up. We just came back onto the track and swiped him out of the race. Absolutely not on. This is it from Max Verstappen's point of view. See, just contacts we went wide in and I don't know. I don't know. It's quite obvious what happened there. Oh, just RKO out of nowhere, here we go. Perez just mind his own business and then bang and he completely loses it and into the side goes Lance Stroll it's a big big impact that one this is another angle we've got a lot of angles to cover here you can see in there just just got no chance of getting out of the way T-Bones his teammate when he's spinning back onto the track somewhat a bit of Renault's lost a bit of front wing as well there Bit of red o front wing flying out in. It's a terrifying angle with that. It goes really, really kind of slow and then it comes out of nowhere. And Esteban Ocon, that's where the damage he got. But he's managed to get through unscathed. This is a screenshot of the incident. You can see there. Wow. Just before the impact and Lance Stroll. Coming into the pits, he's got a put on a new front wing. He completely ripped half of it off. It's a good job it was reduced. Otherwise, I'm not not sure how he didn't get get wiped out of the race after T Bone and his teammate will have more front wing damage. I do have it on reduced, so probably that was the reason. As Daniel Ricciardo tried to do his rally outside the the avocado avocado the honey badger. Cannot do it, but we've gone a bit wide, and he's made it stick up the inside. We tried to do the switch back, but Danny Rick has got the job 
done. And now this is just us skipping on now. We just be out there. Nice got behind. Two seconds to Perez. Two seconds to Ricardo. We're, we're just managing the gap all on our own. It was it was manageable. It was all right. It's out of the race though. There is, you can see there, there's yellow flags and that is for George Russell in the Williams. Poor, poor guy. Had a lucky for him. Massive engine failure and that's probably going to be a penalty for the final round in Abu Dhabi for him. What a shame. Now, on to lap 15, we're going to come into the pits to make our one and only stop onto the medium compound tyres um, we'll be looking to carry on and um, hopefully just manage the pace um, maybe catch up to some people but we'll see Brazil, it's, it's, been, it's been a strong race so far obviously we had that start, we were always going to fall back we were never going to challenge the Ferraris and the Mercedes that was that was dream lambda unless, they, unless we somehow grew some bigger elbows and then Ford wiped each other out we may have a chance but no if we come out just in front of Lando Norris skipping all the way on to lap 24 we pulled away from Lando Norris but those doing the two stop tried to start to crawl the way back through that's what Daniel Kvyat's doing there on the soft compound of tyres Charles Leclerc though has won the Brazilian Grand Prix we're going to come home to get one solid point here in Brazil it was a bit of a dull race but just one more to go this season alright race over take care of the car on the way in Another superb Brazilian Grand Prix comes to an end, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Ferrari are at it again, an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. So that's been your Brazilian Grand Prix. At least we got a point after Hector's start. We finished a grip below where we started, only just, but you know what? I'll take it, I'll take it. It's a point, a point's a point. A point is a point. And hopefully, going into Abu Dhabi, we can keep it going, and maybe if we can get good points in Abu Dhabi, we might even be able to take that into 2021 as well. Um, Callum Isla, again, not really anywhere. We're still still undecided on what to do to him. We've got some new sponsors um, to renegotiate, which I like to keep the same sponsors because you wouldn't see real F1 teams drop and change sponsors halfway through the season or at the end of the season. Um, so I just kept the same sponsors. I think I changed one of them. Um, on the upgrade side, the R&D, there isn't really much to do. I'm just going to keep the points and just go all in after Abu Dhabi. But that has been this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe and come back for the finale episode of this very dragged out season. Goodbye.